These young men with their parachutes, red coveralls, and clubhouse are part of a phenomenon that's becoming commonplace at local airports all over America. They are sport parachutists, practitioners of an infant art hardly older than themselves. This sport parachutist, and thousands like him, represents a tremendous increase in popularity that the sport has enjoyed in recent years. Relatively unknown until the end of World War II, parachuting for fun in the sky at their sports arena. For them, man's old dream of flying free like the birds has been realized as never sensations of free fall. But preceding the fine points of any sport are its basic elements. And, as in any sport, the basic elements of sport parachuting are organization and fundamentals. The organization in this case is the Parachute Club of America, or the PCA as it's called, and the fundamentals are safety and more safety. The special care and attention this man is devoting to the packing of his chute are evidence of the standards which make organized sport parachuting one of the safest individual sports in the world. This emphasis on safety has produced innovations in the basic piece of equipment, the parachute itself. One such innovation is this sleeve, being carefully drawn over the folded panels of the parachute canopy. All sport parachutists use the sleeve, a device that looks like its namesake, and ensures a smooth, continuous flow when the chute deploys after being released. To the eye of the uninitiated, the process of packing a parachute for use seems complicated. But to the experienced jumper, this careful folding the precise looping of lines into elastic bands that hold them neatly in place is almost as simple as tying the laces on his jump boots. The single most important factor in the development of sport parachuting in America is the PCA. The PCA is a national organization composed of thousands of individual members and scores of affiliated local clubs all over the country. Like this one in Livermore, California. The advantages these clubs offer their members are the advantages of group activity. Sport parachuting is mainly an individual sport. But these clubs give their birds a chance to flock together, a chance to associate with others who feel the same way about the challenge and thrill of the sport. Local affiliate clubs of the PCA have a more formal purpose too. They provide places where students can come and learn. Fledgling jumpers as new members are instructed in the skills and procedures that lead to their being licensed by the PCA as sport parachutists. The clubs give their members the opportunity to jump regularly and by association with other more skilled and experienced to improve their own standards of performance. Although sport parachuting is a term that best describes this sport, it is often referred to as skydiving. In fact, the title Skydiver has become a sort of nickname for the sport parachutist. With the insertion of the ripcord, that device used by the jumper to release his parachute, this member puts the finishing touch on his packing job. This is one game where neatness counts. parachute is now ready for use. Oddly enough, parachutes have changed very little through the years. As this skydiver leaves the packing area, the parachute he carries, except for minor modifications, is similar to the ones developed in the middle 1930s. For the benefit of some student members, the club's training officer demonstrates how a parachute opens. A tug at the ripcord opens the back pack and out pops a spring-loaded pilot chute. The small canopy of the pilot chute inflates and pulls out the folded main canopy. The sleeve slides off to unsheath the circular canopy, which expands to a diameter of 28 feet. Something else a student must learn before he takes to the air is how to land at the end of his jump. This is a technique of the PLF, or parachute landing fall. Sessions on a platform like this teach the student to distribute the slight landing shock throughout his entire body, thus lessening the effect.
Other sessions of hanging in harness give the student the feel of swinging beneath an open canopy. Here, the novice jumper learns the quick way to get out of his harness. Practice will be essential later on as he progresses to the point of making jumps over water. More platform work teaches a student the basic stance of free fall, the stabilized position. With head up, arms and legs in a spread eagle position, the parachutist in free fall can control his body and maintain a horizontal attitude in space. All the maneuvers and aerobatics that are part of free fall stem from this basic stance. Learning to achieve this stance and to hold it while falling through the air is the first hurdle the skydiver must take before he is eligible for free fall jumps. The airplane is a parachutist link between earth and sky. and Almost any plane can be certified for jump use. Once the door and right side seat have been removed, all this plane needs is some jumpers. This student gets some last minute practice on the poise exit he will use in a few minutes when he leaves the plane, thousands of feet in the air. The duty officer is an important figure in the well-run club. Checking his roster to see who's making this trip, he also keeps an eye on the jump master who is making still another safety check on the parachute pack and harness. After the jumpers leave the plane, they must have a place to land called a drop zone. The drop zone, or DZ, like everything else in sport parachuting, must conform to certain standards. This level field, except for a curious cow, is free of hazards, and therefore is a suitable drop zone. Club members lay out the white strips on the target, which is the goal of the third, or canopy phase, of any jump. Landing on, or near this target, is the mark of an accomplished parachutist. Our curious cow is going to call a council meeting to assess the situation. Of the three jumpers on this trip, one is a student making one of the static line jumps required before he goes on to free fall. The static line is an eight-foot strap anchored inside the plane and attached to the student's parachute pack. When he jumps, the pack opens automatically. With everyone aboard, the starter grinds the prop into action and our parachutists are ready for a lift up to where the fun begins. And they're off. Once over the drop zone, the jump master has the important task of spotting the jump. He does this with a wind drift indicator, or streamer, which shows him the effect prevailing winds will have on a descending parachutist. This allows him to gauge the proper exit point that will give the jumpers a good shot at the target. Using the poise exit he reviewed on the ground moments before, the student takes that last big step into thin air. Although his chute is opened for him by the static line, he goes through the practice procedure of counting and pulling a dummy rip cord. Although he accidentally drops it, this still gives him the feel of making a real free fall jump. He must make a minimum of five such jumps and learn to achieve the stable position before making his first free fall effort. The other jumpers need more altitude for the free fall maneuvers they have in mind. However, one has a little trouble and flips over once before he's in position. His friend quickly takes the opportunity to poke a little fun at him by rolling over to show him what he looked like. Although the student worked hard and earnestly during his descent, this is strictly a fun jump for these experienced skydivers. And they make it an occasion for sailing at random around the sky, demonstrating the control they can exercise while falling at nearly 120 miles an hour. Despite the many entries in their logbooks, this jump is still fresh and new to them. In many ways, it's their first time all over again. But these are sensations and thrills that never get old. At 2,500 feet, the PCA says rip cords must be pulled and free fall is over. Now comes the gentle descent back to Earth and a try at landing on that target in the drop zone. Mm -hmm. 
As these parachutists come down close to the target, the Council of Cows decide to give up its claim to the property, and the meeting stands adjourned. Sometimes on a breezy day, parachutes are reluctant to lie down after the landing, like imps who don't want to go back into the bottle. Then it takes a little running around to collapse a canopy, and that's when the members of the drop zone ground crew again come in handy. It takes a few minutes to climb out of the harness, loop the lines together, and gather up the fold of the canopy. Then comes the get-together for the inevitable critique that follows every jump. Like any sport, half the fun comes in talking about it after the game is over. The real spirit of sport is competition. And in sport parachuting, the challenge of the jump and the thrill of free fall are not ends in themselves. The sport takes on its real meaning when skydivers test their skill against that of others in inter-club, interstate, and even international competition. With the PCA establishing the basic and standardized rules, competition in sport parachuting has become well organized. As you might guess from this young woman folding her chute, the world of sport parachuting is no longer a man's world. On the trophy tables and in the record books are special categories for the achievements of women parachutists. But it is still a sport for adults only. And this young jumper must be content just to watch for a few years yet. And there will be plenty for him to watch today. The first plane load of competitors is watched by judges and spectators as it climbs into position over the drop zone. In competition, the skydiver does not score points only on his ability to land on the target. He is judged on every phase of his jump, his exit, his control over his body in free fall, and his target accuracy. The first jumper lands very near the target, setting a tough pace for the others to follow. As he moves out of the target area, judges run in with a marker and tape measure to record his results. Off to one side, this judge lies on his back with a stopwatch taped to his binoculars as he evaluates the exit of another jumper. The open gores and panels seen in these canopies, controlled by the toggles which jumpers pull while maneuvering for the target, are factors which allow the parachutist to move at various speeds to execute fast turns and to change direction, as this man did to record a near-perfect jump by hitting just inches from dead center on the target. Parachute canopies come in many colors and designs, each reflecting something of the personality of its owner. Reflected, too, is the rugged individuality of those whose chosen sport is parachuting. Some of that same spirit can even be seen in this judge's south-of-the-border headgear. The competition stretches into the afternoon until, with the landing of the last contestant, Then in a mass jump to mark the end of the meet. Parachutes pop open in gay profusion all over the sky. After the stress and strain of competition, the relaxation of jumping in a bunch and just for fun is a pleasant change of pace. But there's always... And for those who did especially well today, there's something extra to take home a golden trophy to preserve their pride both for themselves and for their club.
But there is still another level of achievement in sport parachuting that is the goal of the beginner and the pleasure of the master. That is relative work, performing free fall maneuvers in cooperation with other jumpers. Relative work is the ultimate accomplishment in control and free fall proficiency. It has been described as the greatest thrill in sport parachuting for both spectator and participant. Smoke flares carried by free falling skydivers not only mark their progress for those below, but they also add another touch of beauty to the sport. Short years ago, the passing of a baton between jumpers and free fall was considered a remarkable feat. Today, while nonetheless remarkable, it is done with ease and grace in most exhibitions of relative work. From the ground, the plummeting streamers of smoke flares give evidence of swift descent that is not as readily apparent to those aloft. This skydiver, seemingly suspended on ropes of smoke, gives the appearance of a gymnast performing on the rings as he easily executes a graceful loop. Another baton pass demonstrates the subtle skills involved in controlling the body with slight movements of arms and legs, which act like the control services of an airplane. These sport parachutists have mastered themselves and their new element. This freefall version of Ring Around the Rosa requires the efforts of three jumpers. Only the wind whipping through the jumpsuits gives any indication that these men are falling rapidly through space. Otherwise, they appear to be suspended in midair, holding hands and jointly savoring the unique sensation that belongs only to the sport parachutist. These matchless moments in freefall are fulfillment for the master, incentive for the novice, and temptation to the uninitiated. This jumper's pilot chute hesitates just long enough to wrap him on the helmet with a reminder that free fall and relative work are over once again. The canopy that stretches above the skydiver's head is 796 square feet of nylon held together by half a million stitches. It sounds awkward, but the jumper makes it graceful. It looks unwieldy, but the parachutist handles it deftly. It seems unlikely, but these people have made it a sport. With the sport parachutist return to earth comes also the return to a more immediate reality. Now the parachute must be put away and an entry in the logbook will end the day. In a short time, he will be reminded of the workaday tomorrow ahead, where he is a salesman, a carpenter, a lawyer, or an office worker. But yet, he is somehow more than this. <laughs> 